Hello and welcome back. In today's Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight 10 things you didn't know about Ryan Coogler. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we celebrate Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Ryan Coogler has directed a billion-dollar smash in Black Panther, but he remains humble as can be. In 2013, he made Fruitvale Station, a drama based on the shooting of a young Black man in Oakland, California, where the director grew up. In 2015, he brought Rocky Balboa out of retirement for Creed, which he made for his father, a lifelong Rocky fan. But Coogler describes the 2018 Black Panther blockbuster and Marvel's first superhero movie with the majority Black cast as his most personal film to date. The project gave him the opportunity to explore what it means to be African American. It not only gave him a chance to do justice to one of his favorite superheroes, but also gave him the opportunity to work with Hollywood's best African-American talent and actors while supported by Disney's multi-million dollar budget. In this original Black Excellence video, we will be featuring Ryan Coogler. So without further ado, let's get started. One, Ryan directed Marvel's blockbuster film, Black Panther. In January 2016, Coogler signed on to co-write and direct the Marvel Cinematic Universe film, Black Panther. The film began production in January 2017 and was released in 2018. Upon release, the film was an overwhelming commercial success, breaking multiple box office records. It eventually became the highest grossing film in history, directed by an African American. Critics stated that Black Panther elevates superhero cinema to thrilling new heights, while telling one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's most absorbing stories, and introducing some of its most fully realized characters. Coogler is the first Black director on a Marvel movie, and the youngest filmmaker Marvel Studios has ever hired. Two. Ryan is a native of Oakland, California. Coogler lived in Oakland until age eight, and then his family moved to Richmond, California. Ryan grew up reading about superheroes who looked nothing like him. One day he walked into a comic book store and asked if they had any comic books about black people with a black superhero. The comic store employee responded, oh yeah, as a matter of fact, we got this one, Black Panther. Therefore, when Coogler was blessed with the opportunity to direct Black Panther, it was a lifelong dream come true. And he was even able to rep for his hometown in Black Panther. There are a couple of scenes where we are taken to the streets of Oakland as opposed to the Harlem-based origin in the comics. For Coogler, he wanted to pay homage to his childhood city and the place where he fell in love with comic books. Three. Ryan scheduled a research trip to Africa for Black Panther. Before starting work on the Black Panther project, Coogler challenged himself with the question, what does it mean to be African? And it wasn't a question he couldn't answer, but a question he felt he needed to answer. In pursuit of both a personal connection with his African roots, as well as deeper research for the film, Coogler felt that it was important for his directing team to visit Africa. And since many of them had not been to Africa before, Coogler staged a research trip for the crew to experience the environment firsthand. That trip set the stage for the production design as the team zeroed in on the continent's unique topography and how it would align with Wakanda. Coogler also developed part of the script while in South Africa. The trip also helped the team design a concept of Wakanda as a country instead of a city. And reflecting what he saw on his trip, Coogler made sure that he showcased a pleasant mix of citizens living the more traditional, tribal lifestyles, as well as those who live a cosmopolitan city life, but an African city life. Four, Ryan was a pretty good football player. Ryan started his college journey at St. Mary's College of California in Moraga, California on a football scholarship as a red shirt wide receiver. A math and science whiz, he entered his freshman semester intending to study chemistry. 
After St. Mary's canceled its football program in March 2004, he transferred and earned a scholarship to play at and attend Sacramento State, where in his four years, he grabbed 112 receptions for 1,213 yards and six touchdowns. At Sacramento, he majored in finance and graduated with honors. While balancing the rigors of academics and college football, he enrolled in as many film classes as he could fit in. Kugler admits that playing football and organized sports prepared him for his role as filmmaker. He was able to draw a parallelism between the responsibility that both filmmaker and football player has to fulfill to their fans' or audiences' dreams and expectations. 5. Ryan has a young but successful directing career. While at the University of Southern California School of Cinematic Arts, Kugler directed four short films, three of which won or were nominated for various awards. Locks, 2009, was screened at the Tribeca Film Festival and won the Dana and Albert Broccoli Award for filmmaking excellence. Big, 2011, was written by his classmate, Alex George Pickering, and won the HBO short film competition at the American Black Film Festival, as well as the DGA Student Film Award. It was also nominated for the Outstanding Independent Short Film at the Black Reel Awards. And Gap, 2011, won the Jack Nicholson Award for Achievement in Directing. You can also visit our website, blackexcellist.com and sign up for our membership privileges and exclusive newsletter. 6. Ryan and Michael B. Jordan have a tight friendship. Kugler and Jordan felt a close connection from the moment they met. They connected about their parents because they both have very close relationships with their mother and father. They share similar cultural politics. They both are former athletes and they have similar tastes in film and books. Michael B. Jordan appears as the main antagonist, Eric Killmonger, in Black Panther, having thus far starred in all of Kugler's films. Jordan played Apollo Creed's son, Adonis, in Kugler-directed Creed that was released in November 2015. Kugler's first feature-length film, Fruitvale Station, starred Jordan as Oscar Grant, who was shot to death by a police officer in Oakland. Kugler's fourth project will also star Michael B. Jordan. The film is based on a group of Atlanta high school teachers who participated in the famous Atlanta Public Schools standardized test cheating scandal of 2006. 7. Ryan executive produced an ESPN 30 for 30 film. ESPN 30 for 30 film, The Day the Series Stopped, revolved around Game 3 of the 1989 World Series between the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland Athletics. The matchup promised to be a memorable moment since it was the first time in 33 years that two teams from the same metropolitan area would compete for the same title. However, on October 17, 1989, at 5.04 p.m., a devastating earthquake shook the Bay Area to its core. But it wasn't just the game that was impacted. The 6.9 earthquake brought death and destruction throughout the entire Bay Area. The Loma Prieta earthquake killed 63 people, injured 3,000, and left the Bay Area with pancaked freeways and a stunning collapse on the Bay Bridge. 8. Ryan credits his parents for his work ethic. Ryan's mother, Jocelyn, is a community organizer. His dad, Ira Kugler, is a juvenile hall probation counselor. Ryan's parents both have really strong work ethics. He was inspired as they would wake up early every morning to ensure they could provide for Ryan and his two brothers. They did not have much money, but what they did have, they invested into their son's education by sending them to a predominantly black private Catholic school in Oakland. Ryan's affinity for TV and movies also stems from his parents. Ryan recalls when his dad took him to Malcolm X and Boys in the Hood. His dad also liked to watch sports movies. They would watch all the Rocky movies together. Ryan's mom, on the other hand, liked Martin Scorsese movies, which Ryan enjoyed watching along with her. 9. Ryan was inspired by teacher to become screenwriter. 
Although Kugler attended St. Mary's College for only one year before they canceled their football program, it was a very critical year. While at St. Mary's, Kugler was taking a creative writing class. He was given an assignment to write about a personal experience, so he wrote about the time his father almost bled to death in his arms. Later, the professor called him into her office and asked what Kugler wanted to do with his life. He replied that he wanted to play ball, become a doctor, and be a positive influence in his community. His teacher responded, I think you should become a screenwriter. You can reach more people, and one day you could possibly direct in Hollywood. Ryan thought she was crazy then, but one day he would go back and thank Miss Rosemary Graham for helping shape his future. 10. Ryan credits much of success to teamwork with women. Kugler is drawn to working with compelling women, both behind and in front of the camera. Whether it's the female cinematographers and female editors for his first three movies, or the strong female characters, Kugler tries to integrate very strong women whenever he has the opportunity. These powerful figures come to life in the warrior women of the Dora Milaje in Black Panther. Tessa Thompson's hearing-impaired musician in Creed, and the characters played by Octavia Spencer and Melanie Diaz in Fruitvale Station. He recognizes that in a macro sense, strong women are the cornerstone of the Black community, since you often find incredibly smart, resilient, and layered women at the head of the household. Kugler admits that one of his primary goals in Hollywood is to make films that capture the amazing women that have always been in his life. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.